Hello, everyone. Welcome to It's Sybil. I am Sybil Wilkes, and the girls are all here. Hey, girls. Hey. Hi, Sybil. Miss Aprilette. <laughs> Don't you just love it? <laughs> I, I I I won't go into what I think it, it it reminds me of and and I'm I don't know what the weather is going to do for us today. Yolanda, are you with us? Are you with us? I, I, I'm here. I just I just keep yawning, Sybil. I'm sorry. Oh, it's that I'm time, but it's also one of those days. Yeah, yeah. If, my, if I didn't have my alarm set, I really would have slept through. Really? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's delicious. Ooh. Yeah. We've had rain all day. Yeah. And um and and thunder and lightning and hail. Oh my. And uh, <laughs> and uh it's just been one of those days and and you know turning on lights to kind of lighten things up to to bring some some brightness to the situation because otherwise it looks like about seven, eight o'clock at night or yeah. at about eleven o'clock this morning. <laughs> well at know. one point it was hailing. Did y'all get some hail? Yeah. I Did didn't you get any? Not out here. Um, I and didn't it was big that. too. They were big pieces. Oh wow! One thing that what I did get, that wind, like we mm. had a lot of wind, and it mm -hmm. scares me because I have um lights on my patio and they get the moving and clinking and clacking. Oh yeah, yeah. That wind is something terrible. So um, do, does your dog get disturbed by the weather, Aprilette? He gets disturbed about everything else when he doesn't see my face, but um, yeah. the weather really doesn't disturb him. He'll like look up and kind of like check the scene, but he doesn't really get you know, nervous about it. So Yolanda, I was looking at um, the, the neighborhood newspaper and they were asking about the Thunder shirts uh, and mm -hmm. they were wondering if they work for their dogs. And because Ramsey does get disturbed by the Thunder, would you recommend that? It didn't work for my puppy. So no, I wouldn't recommend it. But I but I I wouldn't yes, I would recommend it. But just because it didn't work for my puppies, I don't think that that, that it won't work for somebody else's cuz my puppies are just different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally. Well, well, they are they uh it's the weather, it's the thunder and and what have you as well as fireworks time. Mm. But I think uh that Ramsey in particular might be a little like um Gucci. Um if well, I'm here, Ramsey's okay. He's good. Now yeah. if you're gone, I'm gone. That changes, ooh, that changes the dynamics of things. Look See, at him. Look at him. Oh, oh, sweet baby. And it's raining out there. Yeah. But he's he's real chill right now. Baby, that's what Gucci doing. He got his arms like this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and his arms like that. Yep. <laughs> Man, I went. I was over at Yolanda's the other day, and she's like, "Well, did you let him out?" And I was like, "No, he just wanted to sit in the peace and relaxation room." And then uh, I went, and we did. I I went outside, and he's just kind of sitting there. And only when Yolanda came in was he, you know, coming outside. He he was not about coming outside until until she was there, and it was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! I mean, and he was sitting out there, you know, and 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 then and I think he was just waiting for for her to feed him. And then... his Gucci's been doing this weird thing with feeding. I've been having to tell him, you can eat. Like, I'll put his food down, he'll stare at me, you know, all of the nine yards, and then I'm like, you can eat. And then he'll go over and eat. So I don't know what, he's been acting really strange. Like, he has to be told to eat now. So, oh, I don't wow. know. Have you noticed anything with your dogs? Ramsey's always, he's always been like that. Oh, really? And yeah. he likes to have people sitting outside when he eats. Well, he likes to have Yolanda sit outside. Well, well, what's funny about his, his eating, he prefers for Ward to feed him, but Sybil. We're going to need some Auntie Sybil to kick in because, and I don't know what it means, but April let Ward has switched Ramsey's food. He now gets farmer's. Uh -huh. okay. Farmer's the, dog. The farmer's dog. And just the whole package and delivery. Yeah, I'm yeah. asked how much it costs. <laughs> yeah, because Mr. White must about to he. I guess he's about to get a little part time job. I don't see how we can afford this. Because it's pricey. I can't. I can't imagine it. The packaging looks very yeah. expensive. And and those commercials are beautiful because they have them. They look like real food, and they're sitting yeah. in people's refrigerators. Right. 
And then a girlfriend or a family member go, that's dog food. And then the next thing you know, the girlfriend or the family member sitting outside and right. the person and the dog are just uh, like, she, yeah. don't <laughs> she don't understand. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't said anything to, to Ward because I don't want them to put me out. Right. So I'm just going to wait and see how this play out. So I don't know. I don't know if Auntie Sybil. <laughs> well, Auntie it. Sybil will have to get a part time job to be able to afford that too. But, but for my Ramsey, I will do that. I, I love it. it. I and, love and, it. and Lala too. Lala is a, Lala is a good, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Sybil, Sybil is really, really good. Um, uh, Aprilette, you know, uh, Ramsey has arthritis really bad, and he's had it for the past few years. But at one point, Sybil was paying for him to get these weekly, and maybe it was a couple of times a week, these these um, therapeutic, it was these cold-pressed therapeutic, and it was just some godly amount Yeah, that... Yeah, it's good to have aunties. I love it. Look, the wrist auntie. Okay, right, right. right. <laughs> right. right. I, I guess that's going to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's for me and my family. I'm the wrist auntie. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. <laughs> and, and, and also, just a reminder, those were the days. <laughs> right, right, yeah. It's Things do change. It's a different day, yeah, young yeah. Ramsey and young Lawler. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, we are here to talk about things that are going on in the world today. Uh, tonight is the uh, the President's State of the Union address, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Just uh, give you a preview of the preview we've been given of what the President is going to talk about um, as he embarks upon his election campaign. Um, but the the uh, the State of the Union address is not for the campaign. It is what he plans to do uh, in working with the House and the Senate. And so uh, things that he has done, uh, such as uh, eliminating student loan debt and things like that, he'll talk about the the great things that his administration has done. And it's not, I know it sounds like a campaign conversation, but um, it it is you have to maintain some difference. Uh, between the two. Uh, and we're talking about what's in the What You Need to Know newsletter. That is our Monday through Friday newsletter. It's an opportunity for us to uh, talk about things for and about the African-American community and how it affects us. We have uh, Aprilette Russell, who is our mental health and wellness contributor. Uh, we also have uh, uh, LGBTQIA plus uh, contributor, that is Quinn Townsend Riley. Her big brother is Cameron Riley, and he talks about politics as do I. And Coy Malone uh, also talks about social justice. Although I gotta say, I was really pleased with, and, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, because Coy, uh, I worry about you guys sometimes uh, writing about these these subjects that are just so heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coy, something that didn't seem like social justice to me, but I was really uh, happy to see it. And it's about the oldest person in America. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and it's a black woman. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that in a little bit with her. A April Lett is writing about a new study in the Lancet Journal that uh, talks about the connection or maybe lack thereof between menopause and the risk of mental health conditions like uh, di uh, depression. And so April, it just kind of hit home for you too, didn't it? It did. Um, just thinking about older women in my family, especially my mother, we just had a big conversation about just some symptoms that she was having. And I'm just like, you know what? I just read a study where they're saying that menopause now is not an impact, doesn't have an impact to mental health. And so when you think about that, you're like, what? Like, especially for women, you know, the mood swings that people may experience during premenopause or menopause and just the night sweats and just a lot of things that happens around that time when the ovaries stop producing and mm -hmm. the estrogen gets lower. There's a lot of mood swings that happen. So when you think about that, you think about mental health. But in the study, they're saying that um, instead, some women are at higher risk than others for menopause linked mental health issues, while some are able to avoid them altogether. They're saying that individuals with a history of depression, those who have um, their sleep that's disrupted during with hot flashes or those who experience stressful life events around that time, they are more prone to experiencing mental health problems during menopause. So if you are already previously diagnosed with a clinical depression disorder or an anxiety disorder or a psychosis, bipolar or schizophrenia, 
then during menopause, you're more prone to having mental health problems. So if you're just going through premenopause or menopause and you're having depressive episodes or you're feeling like you can't cry or you're feeling just mood disturbances, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be diagnosed with a clinical um, diagnosis, if that makes sense. Because I think a lot of people, um, when they are having um, episodes of just depression or feeling sad, then it doesn't link to a clinical um, it doesn't link to a clinical diagnosis. And mm -hmm. so that's what we have to kind of determine the differences. Um, so with this study, they went ahead and collected data from a lot of women. Um, and pretty much it's just said that the women that have previous um, conditions are more prone to mental health issues during menopause. And, menopause and you can't blame it on menopause. In yes. Other words, right? yes. Mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you, I, I've had the mood swings, but I've not had... Um, uh, the uh, the night sweats. I've not had hot flashes or anything like that. Um, and I get a lot of flack from it from one of my friends mm. um, because I have not experienced a lot of that. Um, but but I think the the but I already had the sleeping difficulties mm -hmm. into my childhood. So um, that wasn't uh, menopause related either. But uh, it it still does affect me. But um, so I can't speak to a lot of that, but um, mm -hmm. I know that, uh, you know, back in my mom's day, um, her friends would talk about, you know, going to the doctor and the doctor giving them their happy pills, <laughs> you know, and yeah. things like that in order to, to uh, you know, ward off depression and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but as far as I can remember, my mom didn't have any of that. And I, I think it's very important too, just during this stages, um, I know uh, researchers say it starts maybe around 47 up until the 50s. When you're experiencing like life, just stress yeah. or events that's going on, whether they're sending kids to college, whether there's job demands or just anything like that, when things are shifting, it's just always good to be an advocate for yourself when you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, I mean, this is just me being me. America is a cash cow when it comes to those medications. I mm -hmm. am an advocate for medicine when needed, but if not needed, you know, like maybe there's other treatment. And so I don't know because I haven't went through that stage yet. But um, I was just talking to my mom, too. And I'm like, I sweat a lot in my sleep. So maybe I should be talking to my OGBYN because why am I so sweaty at night? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that a lot of a lot of women can start earlier than the 47, the 50 age. Sure. There's a such thing as that as well. So I just say be an advocate for yourself and just tell your doctor everything and maybe keep track, too of those symptoms that you're having right um, because you don't want to there's a lot of misdiagnosis going around especially in the black community they they're so quick to diagnose you with the psychosis or they're so quick to misdiagnose so it's just super important to just be an advocate for yourself all across the board and jay anthony brown says that there should be help for men who are living with women going through this <laughs> <laughs> it's just like fan on fan off <laughs> cover on, cover on. <laughs> they have to be an assist they got to be an assist <laughs> yeah it's it's not an easy time for any of us um if you're living with somebody who's going through that or you're going through it yourself but it does help you to have a, a medical uh partner who yeah. can help you go through this and and as you say not always depend upon drugs or or things like that in order yeah. to to alleviate some of these symptoms and, and, and kind of work your way through the process and decide mm -hmm. what works it, best for you. Yeah. And it's a scary time, you know, just in general as aging and thinking about maybe the what nots can happen and things mm -hmm. like that. So at the end of the day, like you're already feeling something that's psychological because it's a change in life and it's kind of a negative connotation when it just comes to what we know about menopause and things like that. So yeah. you have to just take that to account. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, I think it is a discussion that warrants further discussion, uh, further conversation, I should say, um, in terms of, you know, how it affects each of us as we're going through these various stages in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because we do have a number of women here who are in various stages of premenopausal, perimenopausal, postmenopausal, yep. you know, all of that stuff. And, you know, they say that, you know, menopause can last for years and years. Mm -hmm. And so, um, not a very uh, happy topic, but definitely uh, one that uh, is necessary and should be open to men and women alike. Um, and one of the other articles that we talked about in the newsletter was Nikki Haley 
uh, going to the right, to the right, uh, everything in the box to the right uh, for Nikki uh, as she announced that she was suspending her campaign. Uh, I was one who thought that she was going to forge, you know, ahead and, and, and keep going. But she kept her promise that, you know, she was going to make a decision after Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday came. She won one state uh, Tuesday night. That was Vermont. And that came after her first state, that she, not state, but the District of Columbia. She won uh, that contest over the weekend. And I guess it just wasn't enough. And uh, she had her speech and it was less than four minutes. It wasn't a long rambling speech that, you know, a lot of us, you know, she, no, no tears and, you know, thanking all of her, you know, all of the folks and her family and, you know, all of that. It was, it was pretty straightforward. I'm suspending my campaign. Thank you. And, uh, and nothing regarding her, whether she's going to endorse Donald Trump or not. Yeah. And uh, which is unusual because a number of people, well, this particular campaign cycle, uh, have ultimately endorsed Donald Trump. Uh, even Dean Phillips, who is the Democratic congressman who uh, was running uh, as a, a counter to George, uh, to uh, President Biden, uh, he lost his opportunity to run for re-election in, in his run for uh, the presidency, or at least for the nomination. Uh, and he endorsed President Biden. Uh, Marianne Williamson in the Democratic category, she dropped out and then got back in, and that didn't do anything to her for her campaign. Uh, and uh, others uh, like um, Tim Scott immediately, you know, endorsing uh, Donald Trump. Um, uh, the the little Nat uh, Ramaswamy, uh, he immediately endorsed Donald Trump, but. Um, she is she's standing strong and it's gonna be interesting to see where her supporters go that is really the discussion yeah. now now yeah what do you do you guys have any thoughts on that <laughs> or, not, or not it's okay I can. <laughs> well i just didn't want to over i didn't want to talk i didn't want to over talk april let um <laughs> well you wasn't at all because i'm like <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think that she's in a position where uh, I think it's wise for her not to announce immediately. I think we all think that she is definitely going to go that direction. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that she just is is holding on to her power because she's holding her her people hostage by not mm -hmm. saying where she's going, which, you know, it's a it's a power move. I like it. I'm not um, mad at her either, Yolanda. Um, although I, I will say that I have a private bet. Speaking of J. Anthony Brown, you know, he's he uh, when she made her announcement or came out in the middle of the night that she was going to make her announcement, and Jay said, "Let the butt kissing begin." Um, you know, in other words, she was going to, and I, uh, she was going to endorse um, Donald Trump, and I said, "I don't think so. I'm willing to bet." That, that she doesn't. Oh, you don't think she's going to endorse him at all? I don't know that she will. Oh. So if she I, doesn't, does she have to endorse somebody? She does like, not. She, she does, does not. not. No, no, it's not incumbent upon and her. When she goes in her booth, we don't know who she vote for. Who she's going to vote for, yeah. I mean, she could say, yeah, y'all can do what you want. Or, you know, if you want to go with that guy, that's fine. Or if you want to go with the other guy, that's fine. Or, you know, but I, you know, I, I can't. And, and as a matter of fact, it was uh, Sunday, I believe, when she was on Meet the Press. And she said she was not going to follow the uh, RNC directive that they uh, support Donald Trump. Uh, mm -hmm. That was like, you know, when, when you, you're a part of this Republican Party and you have to support whoever is going to be the, the candidate of our party. And she said, no, I, I changed mm -hmm. my mind. Well, again, I think she's going to, but I, again, I like I like her power move if an, if it is in fact a power move because why does she have to say who she endorses right now? Why the yeah. urgency? Right. Why does she have to turn flips? They got eight months. They got yeah, plenty of time. time. We got. I, why does it have to happen today or tomorrow? We got time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and even time before their their uh, convention, which yeah. is yeah. In the yeah, summer, we have plenty of time. In, in we want people to now, to now, now, now. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. And, 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 and he's, how do you want to support this man when he comes out and on his social media and calls her everything but the name her mom and daddy gave her, and you know called her out of her name, and it's like, 
But it, on the other side, people are saying, why don't she come out and denounce him? So whether she support him or not, let the woman do what she do. Yeah, yeah. And and it just really it, it it saddened me the last time that he called all these people such horrible names that were running. It's like if I'm not mistaken, it was like 15, 18 people that were running for president in the Republican Party in 2020, right? Uh, or 2016. And he did, he just demeaned all of them. I'm looking at the time, Yolanda. He demeaned all of them. And then, you know, he talked about how ugly uh, Cruz's wife was, oh and God. little Marco, and you know what it means when he's got little hands and, and all of this stuff. And they, as soon as they came out of the race, they were jumping to him, you know, as if they were like, I want to be with you. I love you. Like, like yeah. Ken Scott. And it's like, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know how you don't stand strong against the name calling against your mother and your father and, 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 and all of that. So um, that's, uh, that's what's going on in the Republican Party. And uh, that is what we talk about in our newsletter. Please go to SybilWilkes.com. And give us your name and your email address. We'll have it in your email box every Monday through Friday morning. And it's absolutely free. L let us move to the what's really going on question. And I mentioned Coy uh, wrote this uh, article about Mrs. Elizabeth Francis, now the oldest living person in America and the fifth oldest person in the world. She is a black woman, survived two world wars, two pandemics, the Jim Crow era, desegregation, mm -hmm saw women gain the right to vote and live to see the first black president, of course, Barack Obama. Um, she became the record holder when the California resident Edie Seccarelli, and I'm not sure about the pronunciation of this, this woman's name, uh, was 100 and uh, was died in February at 116 years of age. Mrs. Francis is 113, thank you much, and going to celebrate her 114th birthday this summer. So the question is, and, and this is a, a, a something that, you know, uh, there are a lot of people my age and <clears throat> older who are passing away. And I'm just wondering how long, if, if you had the decision, if you could make the decision, how old would you like to be? How long would you like to live till age what? Mm. So would it be 70? Would it be 75? Would it be 80? 85, 90, would you like to live to 113, 114 years old? What do you do at 113 years old? What I you think you, you sit there and wait for people to bring you stuff. <laughs> Probably the same thing you do at 80. <laughs> and for some of us in the 50s, <laughs> nothing. If you don't have, have a good kickback, okay, a little kickback, a little cocktail, and we're good. <laughs> no, right. She, she, all she needs is a Coke cocktail, and and so they asked her, you know, um, what, you know, how did she, how did she live this long? And she said, you know, it's just God. And I thought, well, maybe a glass of wine or you know, a day or something. Nope, she didn't even. No, no mm -hmm. alcohol, no, no mm -hmm. cigarettes, no, smoking, no, no nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. Very pure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good have, living. That's, that's good only, living. We only have one of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the question, uh, asking folks who are watching and listening, uh, how long would you like to live? I want to live as long as I have my mind. Mm -hmm. As long as I have my mind, my mind first, um, and then the my physical. my physical second, but really, really my mind. But I guess if I don't have my mind, I won't know. So what difference does it make? <laughs> yeah, but your friends will know. Well, yeah, but I won't. So, <laughs> but you, <laughs> you want us to tell you, don't you? Uh uh, uh uh, because my <laughs> already, my mind is different anyway. So it is. What would be it, is. <laughs> it is. And we've been meaning to talk to you about that. I don't know, Sybil. What? I, what? How would you like to be? I agree with you that I don't want to live any longer than my mind is capable of 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 working and functional functioning properly. Uh, that is, um, but I also like the idea of being able to come and go as I please. You know what I mean? I don't want to be dependent upon anyone to drive me or to you know yeah. that kind of thing. I I I like the the ability to come and go as I please. And so, yeah, I do. I really do look forward to that, uh, having that and maintaining it as long as I possibly can. Um, so if that's 
I, I will tell you, um, my my uh, my cousins, uh, Sherry and Crystal, have a godmother, and now Aunt Ethel is like ninety six, maybe ninety seven, and up until just a couple of years ago, she was doing Pilates every day. Wow! And all of a sudden, she lost her ability to to use her legs, mm. and so she, you know, was in a wheelchair. And then ultimately um, was really dependent upon others. And so her daughter moved her from Las Vegas to her home in Los Angeles. Yeah. That is the kind of situation I don't want to be in, especially I don't have children, but um, also thinking in terms of uh, just having to, you know. Uh, no you know, mobility. People, yeah, no yeah. mobility and no, and I don't want to be dependent upon anyone. So if that's 80, if that's 85, and my mind is 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 starting to fog up now. I don't know what that looks like. And you know, I uh, you know, it, brain freezes and what have you. So, what about you, young Aprilette? Whew, this conversation has me all over. I honestly, I don't know. Um, when but you you're said, you're at a young age that you're like. This but when you said seventy, I'm like, oh, that's still young in my right. mind. It's like, no, it is. Seventy doesn't seem so old. So I'm just like, I, I'm gonna second y'all notion when it just comes to the mind and mobility. But even now, I'm just like, I have brain fog. So it's just like, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess as long as the good Lord gives me, because mm -hmm. I really don't have a number to it. I just want to be able to be functional. Um, yeah, just a, a good time. But at the end of the day, it's ghetto on earth. So I'm okay with I'm 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 okay. I'm I'm okay with leaving whenever it's time because it's real ghetto down here. Real ghetto. What do you what does that mean is ghetto down here? I mean, I don't want to be super spiritual, but this is not my home. So with that being said, like I'm okay whenever it is time for me to go. Like I am a spirit having like this human experience right here, but at the end of the day, it's just like I don't necessarily belong here. Um, in that sense. So I'm okay with leaving whenever it's time. Um, yeah, without getting too deep, but yeah. Well, here's something not getting deep. Um, Rupert Murdoch, the head of Fox News, and or he was, and he left the, the business to his, his children. Um, and it's his life that the TV show uh, Succession was based on, right? Um, he announced his engagement to his, he's 92. He wow. announced his engagement to his 67-year-old girlfriend, Elena Zukova, a scientist who was introduced to him by his third wife, Wendy. And in between was wife number four, Jerry Hall, uh, who used to be with Mick Jagger. And uh, then they he, he just decided that he wanted a divorce one day. And so he got rid of her. And in between, he's had two other engagements to other women. But 92-year-old... Rupert Murdoch is getting married for the sixth time oh. um, and uh, to his 67-year-old girlfriend, Elena Zukova. Shout out to him. He's been lived the life. He's lived in love. He's living his life. Yeah. yeah. And he got enough money to do what he wants to in life, period. Anyway, yeah. so... Yeah. We, you know, the kids don't have to worry about, you know, who he signs his social security over to. <laughs> 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 and, and and who gets mama's good dishes? <laughs> they ain't got to worry about that at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. They got enough to buy good dishes for the whole family and then some. But you know, and and not even work. I don't even know if if uh, Rupert gets social security. Well, good uh, for him. Love is love at whatever and, age. Good and for him. living his life, living yeah. his best life. Yeah, you live multiple lives in that lifetime. Yeah, ninety-two. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. and six wives. Well, five now, going on number six. If well, so, well, I tell you what's interesting. Um, one of my favorite, all-time favorite lyrics, um, in, in in pop culture songs is Nicki Minaj "Moment in Life." Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. where it says that everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Mm. So for those of us that are living in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, but not really living, mm -hmm. then why are you here? And so, Aprilette, mm -hmm. that's why <clears throat> I, I wanted to make sure I heard you and not to challenge, but I would like to offer that this this life that God created, God created this this 
this period and this time as well. And it is good. And, you know, as a believer, I believe that God encompasses everything that, 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 that is around me. And it is good. Not everything is going to work out in my favor. Not everything is going to look like the way I want it to look. I'm not going to get all that I want, but I find joy and peace yeah. because my God is my God. And yeah. come what may, I still have that peace and understand mm -hmm. that this is where it is. That's yeah. why all of this hoopla and talk with Donald Trump and all of this stuff, what's going to happen, you know, like the Dalai Lama say that, you know, we have to find contentment and wherever we are. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know that it's necessarily about how, ooh, sorry. <laughs> Shut up, Sim, I hate you. I hate you, Sim, hold on. Take the role, and you, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. Now she's come taking this one out. <laughs> come back, Yolanda, because we need you to finish your story. I hate you, Sybil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to hold back, girl. I was holding my tongue, and when April said this, when, girl, when I, I saw you going, go. and so I was like, "Well, let me get the Rupert Murdoch thing in because we might not get it after the sermon gets started." But, <laughs> but you, she, I mean. But no, everything that you're saying is th that is true. And I still say that earth is ghetto. Like I, I still stand firm in that. I still stand firm in the world. Does that mean it's not a good place for you? Yeah, what does that mean that it's ghetto? You know? Okay, so when I say ghetto, I'm not like really like going to the definition of ghetto. You get what I'm saying? It's just like a slang term. It's just like, oh, it's just ghetto down here. Like, oh, Jesus, like I'm gonna sit in my house. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna relax because outside in the world, it's a lot of corruption. It's a lot of things going on in the world. And we know that. Just look around as you just used an example of the Donald Trump and politics and things like that. So I don't subscribe to all of that. So when mm -hmm. I think about a long life and longevity and how long I want to be here in my spirit, I everything that you just said, I feel I'm good. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm joyful. I'm blessed. I know where my source, my help comes from. Amen. But in reality, how we living in this duality, it's just like when I walk outside my door and when I can't it's hard to be in the spirit at all times. And I'm working on that. But as you know, with just mindfulness and meditation and things like that. But in reality, when we got to jump back into this meeting, when we got to jump back online to make sure we're checking X, Y, and Z, it kind of takes you out of the spirit. And now you're just in your human being. And that can be a, li a, lot, a lot deep. But what I'm saying, that space, that's a little ghetto for me. In the spirit, I feel exactly what you're saying. Um, but we just live in a duality. And I think finding balance in that and what that looks like for just the individual and as a believer and things like that, how I tr truly try to live my life and what I am living for and just my walk and my journey and things like that. Again, when it comes to how long do I want to live? If I can live like that all the time, sure. But if living in this duality, it's just like I'm I'm good when whenever the Lord calls me. That, mm -hmm. That's it. So, yeah, I don't know if that's explaining it right, how I feel, but yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I, I just was, I was just trying to move along before we got to. Um... <laughs> Listen, you opened this door. Me and Aprilette was sitting here, la, 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 la. <laughs> what are the folks that that's actually me. chimed in and said that's anything? Me. Like, that's did the people talk? I can, I can go back to the song titles and she took my draws. I can go back to that. It, which, you know, by the way, I loved. You do. <laughs> Lenny White has done this song, Aprilette, and my girlfriend Erica sent it in our text chain yesterday. Uh, you know, the video, and it's called She Took My Draws. In, in other words, he was with his girlfriend at the mm -hmm. hotel, oh. and he woke up, and the girlfriend left a note saying, I took your draws. I'm going to put it on the internet. He said, these are the draws my wife gave me oh. on our 21st anniversary. With a picture of her on the front and me on the back. And so <laughs> she took my draws was the song title. Did, did, did you listen to the song? I did listen to the song. And by <laughs> the way, um, I thought your reading all of the lyrics was a lot more effective than those <laughs> words. Yeah. That was priceless because we were able to really, really hear the words and not get caught up in the melody and all of that. That was very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we can go back to that in the last minute we have, if you'd like to. Um, as a no, I like this. Out. I like encouraging people to right. how, oh, sure. however long you live to live. <coughs> right. You know, uh, was it Dr. King that says longevity has, it it, has its place? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. 
Excuse God me. Bless you. Excuse me. Thank God you. Bless you. Please. But yeah, if you're not doing anything, then why are you here? Yeah, but while really you're here, crazy. do something. Yeah. You know, we you owe it to self. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be something grandiose. I think a lot of people get caught up with like put having their name on a billboard or a park bench. It's just like literally a human interaction, a connection, a, an impression upon a smile to a neighbor. Like it doesn't have to be grandiose. Like you do not have to be the next Bill Gates or whatever the case may be. Like you could literally be you and having this interaction and it could be good. Job well done. It don't take much to be yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. That's true. Um, my daddy used to have a, a prayer, let me live by the side of the road where the likes of men go by, men who are good and men who are bad and, and men who are no better than I, uh, if I'm remembering it properly. And that's really, I, I mean, love that. that's really where, you know, my foundation is, is like, you know, doing what I can, as my mother says, you know, you cast Thank your you bread do. upon the water, but yes. uh, also just understanding that you're no better or no worse than than anybody else that that you passed in a, any given day yeah it's really and just for the okay. record ward white just wanted to he just sent me a note <laughs> that i shouldn't want to live past my money <laughs> yeah. and you know what yolanda that is a conversation i have quite often with uh, with my uh my advisor my, so my, my advisor that i my greatest fear is outliving my money mm. really very really? much so for wow. real. i have yeah. never thought about that for real. <laughs> I know you haven't, I mean, but you haven't had to have that thought. She got right. she said her money long. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> I don't I don't worry about anything, Aprilette, because I know God will provide. So He's gonna provide, right? But my that is, and you know, uh, and and God bless him. You wow, know, you know, oh, I didn't know that was. Oh, we gonna have to talk. I didn't know that yeah. was your thing. Yeah, it really is my fear is outliving my money. But do you outlive? But you got Social Security and all of that crap, right? Yeah, and I, I'd like for Social Security to kick in right kick now. In right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like you got years before Social Security. No, I, I'd like it to right now <laughs> because Ramsey needs to eat. <laughs> yes. Um. So, uh, moving on to trending topics. Um, as a reminder that uh. This weekend, daylight saving time goes into effect. So don't forget Saturday night, Sunday morning, before you go to bed, when you wake up, well, probably before you go to bed, uh, don't forget your clock should spring forward one hour. We lose an hour. So let's just say we're in the six o'clock hour right now. You spring forward. We would, uh, This time next week, we'll be in the seven o'clock hour. Okay. And what day is it? That's, That's Saturday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. It's at, Actually, it's at 2 a.m., they tell you. Oh, <laughs> Look, this is when wow. they do it. Yeah. Okay. But daylight so Saving time, so we'll have uh, more hours of of daylight. Guys, oh, that's gonna be good. But the ch the folks going to church on Sunday, make sure we'll be you be late. <laughs> you be late, you know. Yeah. Make sure you figure that out. <laughs> right, right, absolutely right. right. Uh, so that is the one thing to remember. The State of the Union, as I mentioned, the address is tonight. President Biden is expected to lay out a second term agenda to Congress. Among the expected announcements, uh, plans to add a port in Gaza that will be used by the U.S. and partners to get aid into Gaza. You know, over the weekend, they had airdrops of food, of pallets of food uh, for people. And it wasn't a lot. It was like maybe for about 30 something thousand people. But they are going to have a port set up where they will be able to bring in supplies and, and, and distribute it uh, in, in a short period of time. Uh, and also about the administration's efforts to get the hostages who are still being held by Hamas released. And he plans to announce a new border crossing that will open in northern Gaza. But uh, I dare say as great news as that is, uh, there's going to be one set of the uh, American public who are going to be saying, yeah, but what about the borders here? Mm -hmm, uh, sure. What about the southern borders? And so it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. And how people respond, because uh, I don't know if you remember last year, uh, but a couple of Republican women really showed their behinds last year during the State of the Union address. And then Secretary, uh, then uh, Speaker of the House, Mike uh, Kevin McCarthy didn't do anything, but Mike Johnson has told them to, you know, behave themselves this year. Um, they the Republicans have a habit of, you know, shouting yeah. and, you know, calling calling President Biden and calling uh, President Obama a liar and things like that. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll be civil 
and um, we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, the battle to ban TikTok. Oh, and you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. I will do that for you, and, and then we can talk about it later. Uh, the battle to ban TikTok is escalating. I know you're not on social media, uh, Aprilette, but this is a bill that would force TikTok's Chinese owner ByteDance to divest of the popular social media company. And uh, they passed a crucial vote on Thursday today as the company sought to rally users to its defense with a call to action that flooded some congressional offices with phone calls encouraging their representatives uh, and asked them to vote against the bill. It displayed a text that said, stop a TikTok shutdown in big white letters on, on TikTok before urging users to speak up now. I, I'm not a TikToker. Um, I, I don't even know. Do we have a TikTok account, Yolanda? Yeah. We do? Okay, thanks for telling me. I'm confused. You know, what is the bill to do? It, they want the uh, Chinese, come because they think that it's being used to spy yeah. uh, on, mm -hmm. on, on Americans. They want the Chinese company that is owned by the Chinese government. Uh, it's called ByteDance. They own TikTok. Mm -hmm. They want uh, the Chinese government to divest itself of of TikTok from gotcha. ByteDance, and so uh, they want to to separate from government control. Gotcha. Well, do you know that over in China they don't use TikTok the way that Americans use TikTok? Right. Right. Wonder why. You know what I'm saying? So they, they know. They know. You know, like y'all. Oh, Jesus. And we're so we're so easily persuaded, uh, right. or manipulated, or right. and just so easy to get to get distracted on those mm -hmm. things that really aren't important. Yeah. Just more and more and more, just having senseless conversations about things that don't really mean anything, and that's the same thing. With with most social media and what we access, yes, it, it it's bad. It's really really bad. And that one of the things that they're using to influence people is, you know, uh, they're paying people. They become TikTok stars, and so yeah. they are they are paid they, by their money, and right? And so, and that's one thing that's like, you know, if they get rid of us, there goes your money, and and people who really depend upon this money and the the infamy the 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 notoriety that comes with it. And they but see, that, that. that is, you know, the, the, the conspiracy theorist in me just really, that makes me even more paranoid that they're setting all of this up that, you know, you can get this, you can get this, but at the end of the day, it's always about control. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're going to get these influencers. They're going to get more power, more power, but, but to what avail? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. just like your mama. Um, mm -hmm. so that <laughs> uh -uh. Uh -uh. I, I, that's why I always April F, whenever whenever a situation come up, if everybody is looking this way, I'm gonna look this way. Yeah, yeah. I'm go always be the contrarian. I don't want to have the same conversations over and over and over. I don't want to talk about stuff that I don't know. Or as Tavis Smiley used to say, I'm not interested in pontificating <laughs> things that is way above my, my pay level. To For what? It's all to get your mind distracted while mm. some other stuff is really happening. Look over there. Look what I can do. Y'all better be listening now. So, Sybil, even on that, even to make this point, this is so... Okay. This is so juvenile of me in my in my thought. Yeah, adult thinking, yes. Well, yeah, well, compared to somebody as elevated as you, and I and and I yeah. really mean that. No, no, I mean uh, um, mentally elevated. That that's all, and that's okay. That when we were talking about was um, um, Nikki Haley going to mm -hmm. en endorse um, Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, so who cares? Okay. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. I was like, can we talk about the fact that on Leave It to Beaver, <laughs> that uh, uh, Beaver got this cat and really fell in love with it, and Eddie Haskell came along and tried to steal the cat from him? It's the same damn conversation for me, April. Lett. Um, I would really prefer the wa uh, wagon train discussion more than Leave It to Beaver, but. 
That's just me. That's just me. I'm just saying, it's all the same conversation. It's the same dumb conversation that don't amount to anything. Okay. Did it did it did it ever disturb you that Lucy and Ricky and Rob and Laura never slept in the same beds? No. And they each had twin beds that why never got, why is that important? Well, it's as important as, as Beaver and the cat. No, 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 no. Why is it important? No, no, no. I'm 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 leaning into that conversation. <laughs> why do they have to sleep in the same bed? What does that really mean? Well, that really means is that somebody was moving, scooting over in the little single <laughs> twin bed at some point, and then and then they go back to their spot. You know, yeah. and, well, and, that, and that's probably best. Yes, probably. It's, especially really? doing menopause. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I did that. And they, See, didn't I did have, that? and they didn't have ceiling fans either. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my, and, and I'm very honest about this, even though we have an account on his social media platform, Elon Musk is not one of my favorite people. I just, I, I, I don't understand him. I know that he has, uh, he's on the spectrum. I, I recognize that. But the things that he says and the things that he does um just are very disturbing to me and and to make comments um about people or to to chime in when you have nothing to back it up uh is is very immature and and very uh just ignorant in a lot yeah. of ways and that doesn't mean that he's not a smart man uh, from what they say he's a brilliant man and he's right. one of the richest men um but uh he uh lobbed a shot at Jeff Bezos's ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, for her donations to race and gender rights charities. He uh, is under fire for a since-deleted post on his social media platform in which he called out Mackenzie Scott for her donations to charities dealing with the issues of race and or gender. Super rich ex-wives who hate their former spouse should be listed among reasons that Western civilization died. The 52-year-old Musk That's said. That's what you said? Yeah. Uh, he, he was also deleted. Uh, his post was in response to another user's statement via X, said, who is Bezos X giving money to? The post was in response to another user's statement, which read, who is Bezos X giving money to? According to McKinnon, and, and this is why I, I so admire her. They didn't have a, a prenup in the sense that you would have going into a marriage with a rich person. Um, they built Amazon together, mm -hmm. right? And so um, they came together uh, as, as you know, kids, uh, young people working out of their garage, putting Amazon together. And so she played a, a pretty vital part in the creation of that company. And so when they, when he, <laughs> when he had an affair, when he cheated on her and found somebody else, and he, and they came to an agreement of how much. Uh, would be fair. And she came out with $37 billion. And she has used this money and promised that she is going to uh, give a large sum of money to a number of organizations that are underfunded and are often ignored. And namely, uh, one of those organizations are all are, are a number of HBCUs. She has given a lot of money uh, to the HBCUs. And in court, and in case you don't know, Mr. Musk, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, where black children went generations ago because white colleges would not accept them. And now they go because they are loved, they are fostered, and they are given a, 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 a leg up, if you will, that yeah. you might not get in a lot of your primarily white or PWI institutions and something you will not know about. Because according, according to the news stories that come out about your companies and the way that you treat black people, you wouldn't know about this. And you wouldn't know about helping and, and, and fostering these kinds of situations. But she has donated, uh, she said that uh, she, after uh, they reached this, this particular agreement, uh, she pledged in 2019 to donate half her fortune to charity and has made major grounds and inroads in her promise. In 2020, of July 2020, she sent a shockwave through the philanthropic and education worlds by donating more than $1 billion to 116 organizations, including HBCUs, 
spent months giving away another $4 billion to 384 organizations. And this time, 17 HBCUs received money ranging, ranging from $4 million to $50 million uh, to, and totaling more than $400 million in donations. And just to name some of the schools, they included Xavier, Tuskegee, Hampton, Spelman, Morehouse, Morgan State and Howard University. Uh, and, and in the event that you're, you know, looking to, to share some more with HBCU related organizations. Hello. I know I'm kidding. Um, but there's also the Tom Dorner Foundation, which, you know, was created to keep kids in historically black schools. So when you talk out of your ass like that, uh, and yes, I did say that, and I'm not comfortable with saying that word, but when you talk about your out of your ass like that, Elon Musk, you deserve to have your your lack of information, your ignorance corrected. Yeah. And I'm gonna step off my soapbox now. There you go. And, 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 yeah, and, and I'm going to move to entertainment. Uh, look at the time there. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorite events is the Oscars coming on Sunday. And uh, one of the favorite events leading up to the Oscars is the Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards at the Academy Museum, bringing together uh, uh, the nominees as uh, Black women who are nominated, Black women who are, are in the uh, entertainment field. So Danielle Brooks, Oscar nominee for The Color Purple, uh, unfortunately, one of the few nominated uh, from that movie, um, is also going to be amongst uh, Chloe and Halle Bailey, also in The Color Purple, Andre Day, Marseille Martin of um, uh, now I can't remember um, the TV show. Uh, I told you I was gonna have a brain fog at one point. Destiny's Mama, Tina Knowles, Zendaya, and Lonnie Love were among those attending. And it'll be televised too. So uh, it, it, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but they have said that this year it's gonna be on Friday, March 15th at 8 p.m. on OWN. That is the Oprah Winfrey Network. And the host is Method Man. I love him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, oh. yeah, so. Um, Blackish is Marseille Martin's TV show that she was on. Yeah. 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 So um, check that out uh, Friday, March 15th. And um, let us close with your jewel, Yolanda. Okay. So today's jewels, this week we've been talking about um, accepting, just accepting where you are. So the jewel for today is finding peace in life comes from accepting the things beyond your control. Ooh. Ooh, amen. That's, and that's most things. Most things yeah. we don't have any control over. At all. It is it is what it, it is. It is. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Love that. Thank you, Miss April F. Thank you. I enjoyed this. I, I wished you guys on a good Thursday. So so we look forward to seeing you again soon. That's right. All right. Tell Gucci we said hey, Yolanda, thank you again. Thank for you for joining so us. And uh, can we have one more look at Ramsey? Oh, he walked away. He's done with me. <gasps> oh, oh okay. <laughs> you're not giving him enough attention. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Bye -bye. Aloha. Yay.